Okay, so this week we are going to do experiment number one, which is density of solids. Basic idea behind this experiment is to learn how to measure dimensions of the object using vernier caliber. And then from there you're going to calculate the density of the object, but before that you will calculate the volume of the object and measure the mass. For your experimental setup, you have a composite cylinder. You're going to have a brass plate, a coin, and the vernier caliber. Also on your table, you're going to have the information sheet that will give you the information about the composite cylinder and about the densities for the materials that we are using here. Before you proceed with this experiment, first thing you need to do is to learn how to read vernier caliber. Some of you already know this, but some of you may need some refresher. So please go ahead and watch the video on how to read vernier caliber. Also, during your experiment, the assistant will go around and teach each and every one of you individually how to read this instrument. So first, you're going to use the balance that's provided inside the lab and measure the masses of these objects. It is okay if you measure the masses and record them in grams because the masses and volumes of these objects are so small, so we will ask you to report the density in grams per centimeter cube. Once you're done recording the masses, you're going to measure, find the zero reading on your vernier caliber. So basically you just want to see that zero on the main scale is aligning with the zero on the vernier scale. Some of the calibers have the vernier scale on the bottom side. Some of the vernier calibers have the vernier scale on the top side. Either way it's okay and we are using the metric measurements, the millimeter measurements for the vernier caliber. So next thing you're going to do is you're going to measure the length of this brass plate, read the value, then you're going to measure the uh, width of this brass plate. You can record values either in millimeters or centimeters, but make sure when you calculate the volumes to convert everything to centimeters. And lastly, you're going to measure the thickness of this brass plate. Make sure when you, when you measure to put the object in between here, not to go too much up or too much down. So somewhere on the center here. Okay, once you recorded the uh, dimensions, length, width and thickness of this brass plate, you're going to calculate the volume and then from there using the mass that you measured, you're going to calculate the density. Then you will use the standard value provided on your information sheet for the density of the brass and calculate the percentage error. So in the next part of experiment, we are going to go ahead and calculate the density of the coin. Each table has different coins, so that's okay. We are going to consider this coin as a really squashed cylinder. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to measure the diameter of the coin. And you're going to do this five times simply because if you turn coin like this, sometimes you're not going to hit on diameter. So maybe the best thing would be is to measure the diameter placing coin like this. You're going to do this five times and then find the average. Then you're going to measure the thickness of the coin, again five times, and uh, find the average. Once you have the diameter, you can calculate the radius. And then from there, you're going to calculate the average radius and then uh, volume of this coin and then density of the coin. So it is important, you will notice here on, the, on your lab manual, you have empty space. Whenever you have empty space, that means that you need to show your work, your calculations into detail. Okay, the last part and most, a little bit more difficult part is to calculate the density of the composite cylinder. So the first thing here that says is record information given by your instructor. What does that mean? That means that each cylinder on each table is different and it's labeled by the number. So for example, this is the cylinder number two. You're going to go ahead on your information sheet and then find a cylinder number two here. And then the information that you should write down is that the shell of this composite cylinder is made of brass. 
and then inside rod is made from different material. The goal is to find the material from which this inside rod is given, is made. Then you're going to re record down the inner rod radius. It's given here on information sheet and it's 3 16th of the inch. You will need to convert this to uh, centimeters. Third thing that's given to you is the diameter of this inner rod. Simply by multiply the radius by two and that's your diameter. And the fourth thing you're going to be given is the, since you know the uh, material from which shell is made and this is brass, you're going to record the uh, density of the brass to your table. So then what you're going to do is you're going to go a little bit into circles here to complete this table so you would find finally the density of the uh, inner rod. First you're going to measure the mass of the composite cylinder and record it here. Then what you can do is you can measure the diameter of the composite cylinder and record it down here. Then you're going to calculate the radius of this composite cylinder. Lastly, you can measure the length of the composite cylinder and record it into your table. Length of the cylinder, rod and shell is same because it's flat on the ends. So now you have the radius, the length, you can calculate the volume of the composite cylinder, you have radius and length of the rod, you can calculate the volume of the rod. Knowing the volume of the cylinder, and you know that volume of the composite object is equal to the volume of the inner rod plus volume of the shell, you can knowing these two, volume of the cylinder and volume of the rod, you can calculate volume of the shell. Now you know volume of the shell, and you know the density from the material that shell is made from. You can calculate the mass of the outside shell. You already measured the mass on the balance for the whole cylinder, so by subtracting this mass from the mass of the whole cylinder, you can get the mass of the rod. And then finally, you know the volume of the rod, you know the mass of the rod, you can calculate the density of the rod, and then knowing the volume and mass of the whole cylinder, you can calculate the density of the whole cylinder. It is important to remember that the density of the whole cylinder is not going to be a density of the shell plus density of the rod. No, it's going to be the volume divided by mass of the whole cylinder. Also in this space here, please show all your calculations and make sure to include the units in your table. Okay, so now when you're done, you just need to go ahead and answer the two questions uh, after the experiment and that's it.